Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. We're on the new farm that Jan and I purchased. It doesn't have any water points on it. This uh, pond doesn't have a pipe in it. Um, there was no water ever uh, taken out of this pond except for whatever came out the spillway. And we're actually putting the first water skirt. We're putting in rock skirts, folks. So you see the piles of rock up there. There's uh, six to 12 inch. There's a pile of two inch clean. And I've got my skirts marked off. Uh, Johnny's got a 16 foot skirt he's putting in. Right now he's getting the, the clay and the mud out of the area where the skirt's gonna go. And I told him to stack it back over here on the side. It'd be handy for me to grab that with my front end loader anytime I need a pile of dirt. We'll let it dry out good, but it's out of the way here. And uh, Johnny is just a beast on that darn thing. That's a Kubota. I believe that's a 120 horse, maybe. One of the bigger Kubotas made. Anyway, we've got our uh, timeless posts in there as markers. And Joel is laying out timeless posts right now around this thing. And we're getting ready to power it up with our uh, Power Flex. We got our uh, spinning Jenny and our high tensile wire and all of our crimps and our tensioners and everything ready to go. And uh, this will all be put in immediately. As soon as he gets these two skirts in, he's got one there. We've already got one marked out over there where those blue posts are. And I got two piles of rock over there as well. So you got the big stuff and the little stuff. And we're, we're gonna try and put geotextile on this, but we're gonna see. Johnny said the hole might fill up with water uh, when he gets it ready, but we're just gonna see. I didn't put textile on any of the others, and they've been in now for, gosh, four, five, six. Some of them have been in for seven years. I can't tell they've settled a single inch. So, I tell you, when you put two foot of that big rock down and pack it tight, uh, it really doesn't seem to go anywhere. Um, it's just like a big pillar of stone, you know. And of course, we're working with clay here. That's not topsoil, that's clay. So that clay is a pretty good base. I'll tell you now, he works quick. He just started on this less than five minutes ago. As soon as he digs this next, I'm gonna go ahead and get my post out of this way. in his way. Well, I tell you what, I'll be so glad to get this in. It just tore me up to see what those cattle did to that pond bank over there in two days. A nice pond. I mean, if you had to have somebody come in and build this for you today, the size of this dam behind me, you're looking at probably ten thousand dollars to build this pond. I don't know if you could build it for ten. Yeah, you might. It, it, it'd take a lot of dozer work because it's, it's a big area. Uh, this pond is close to three quarters of an acre, and that's all got to be dug out. And of course, the brush that would have been on it, you had to clear all that out. have been a major major deal I'm gonna get me some grass carp I'm gonna put me some grass carp in here I got a lot of moss I wouldn't hurt if some of that was consumed by a grass carp Yeah, 
some good clay there. That's good. You want a nice, good yellow clay as your base. for him. It doesn't need to be there anymore. I was just giving him a marker to go by. So we'll just set this. That's one of those timeless posts. Folks, I, I love these darn posts. I tell you what, we built this. I just grabbed a handful of those. And, uh, I just prefer them over fiberglass. Um, I don't have to worry. See, I can handle this post with bare hands. There's no fiberglass splinters to get your hands caught in. You don't have to paint it. It's already pre-drilled. It's pre-sharpened. And they've all got a depth gauge on them right there. So when that sticker disappears right where my thumb is, you're in the ground 16 inches. Stop hitting it. That's your, that's your depth gauge. And it's got multiple holes so you can run as well this is a four footer so all we're doing is running one single strand uh, around it oh he's got that is so uh, he's so fast he's just fast he's fast with that thing I like watching somebody that's efficient with their machine, you know? You can tell he's run that in a few hours. Look how he's dressing up that bank over there for me. <laughs> I'm gonna use that dirt, Johnny. <laughs> we got all this uh, bunch of road to take up. We're gonna need some soil to put on it. They hauled off of here when they put all that rock in. Somebody made the comment the other day, he said, leave it alone and nature, nature will cover that rock up with, with grass. And, you know, I love your all's comments. Please, please keep them up. And that's a good one. I mean, he, he's probably right. I've seen it. I have seen areas where people uh, put down rock and then you wait, um, oh, two or three years and you can't see where the rock is at. He's letting some water in there now. This is the part that scares me. If I was on that skid steer, geez, I'm afraid I'd float off into the pond. You know? I know it's a heavy skid steer. He's dumping the water out. He's got him. Getting real close to putting in the big stuff. Hey, folks, there's some serious weight right there. You know how heavy a bucket of mud is. Go get your five gallon bucket and fill it full of mud. Weigh it. I, I bet it's surprised. It's probably 100 pounds. There were several tons right there. I would never tackle this job. I'm afraid I would end up floating around after that pond on a skid steer. That I'd have to be rescued. Somebody would have to throw me a rope. Take more rope to pull that thing out. See, he's... Gosh, John, you don't move. Be careful. That thing spins out. I guess he can always use his bucket. You see, he's not even spinning. 
there he is a little bit going up that hill but he's not spinning in there uh, the tracks on his skid steer are pretty aggressive um, they're not turf it's not a turf track it's it's for digging in dirt and mud otherwise he probably couldn't do this Any trouble once he gets to rock in there. But, you know, he's got to get all that mud out of the way. That's what he's doing. <laughs> There's no way I'd tackle that. Well, here's what he's going to put in first. I don't think we're going to mess with the geotextile. I don't know how you get it in there. It's all that water. And there's no way to get it there. Johnny's going to put it. We already talked about it. If it looks like it's just going to be impossible to get the textile down, forget about it. You know, if you had a dry pond and it wasn't filled up, I think the textile might be an option. When you got water coming in your ramp if you're trying to build it, I don't think it's an option. I mean, how are you going to get textile in there? You can't. He's taking that little bit of mud off that ramp right there so he doesn't spin. He's going to get him a bunch of big rock and he's going to build him an alleyway, a ramp out there into that pond. see where your bucket is level it's pretty easy to dig a big old gouge of dirt out right here he hasn't done that at all the grass is all still intact guess where I'm going with that is folks pick out what you're good at and do that and what you're not good at you might think about what somebody else did You might do it. You could get hurt doing it, or worse, um, you turn that thing over out in that pond or something. It could be more than hurt. You could perish. I had a really good friend. Um, I mean, good friend. I grew up doing chores for him. He was a world-renowned early pioneer in the grazing world. Believe it or not. And uh, he was one of the first people in the United States to bring in Gallagher, Gallagher fencing products back in the 70s, before it was even cool. People, what is that orange looking stuff? And uh, anyway, he was my neighbor. And when I was in high school, in junior high, I did his chores for him, because he was on the road all the time, uh, doing sales, selling Gallagher, and he had, Tons and tons of people selling them for him. And then Gallagher, once he got a spot out there, they came along and I think, I don't know what happened, but I think they yanked, yanked it where just anybody could sell it. Okay, but he worked at it hard and I'm gonna tell you his name. I was gonna do a special video for him, but it doesn't hurt to mention his name. His name was uh, Ron McBee. And in the grazing world, in the cattle world, a lot of people knew Ron. Some people uh, didn't get along with Ron. Some people loved Ron. Uh, I'm in the uh, ladder. I love Ron. He always treated me. Ooh, Johnny, be careful. He always treated me with utter respect. And uh, he was just, he was a maverick, man. He was doing things. He was doing things in the 70s that people are doing now and think that they're changing the world. 
he was doing it back in the 70s and Ron put together a really nice grazing operation over by Fayette I don't know he had 2,000 acres maybe and then another thousand at least and uh, he he was uh, he had it all set up paddocks waters had some guys working for him and he was out there on a Saturday I think I don't remember. It was, I think it was a weekday. Uh, I'm sorry, weekend. And he had one of these. He had one. It was. I don't know if it's a Kubota. I don't remember what the brand was. Uh, anyway, he had bought a trencher attachment. It goes on the front of it. A trencher attachment. So you're thinking trencher. I'm. I'm sorry, not trencher. Bobcat. Uh, like a mini hoe, he had a mini, a mini hoe attachment. He had a mini hoe attachment so he could dig a trench. And he was putting in some plumbing on a pond on the back of his farm by himself. He just bought this attachment, brand new. And um, I don't know how it happened, but he got off to check something, and that darn arm came around on that attachment the uh, mini hoe attachment it came around and smashed him up against the cab of that skid steer and they found him three hours I don't know three or four hours he didn't come back like he's I think his wife reported he should have been back by then they went and found him he's dead and I bet you Ron had run that skid steer Oh gosh, probably a thousand times, but not not with that new attachment. And somehow it swung around. Whether he hit a safety safety uh, bar, I don't know what he hit, but it came around and got him, and it, it pinched him up against the cab and just took his air out. You know, he couldn't breathe. And uh, Ron was a sharp guy. He wasn't no idiot. He was a very sharp fellow. And, so if, if it could happen to Ron McBee, it could happen to anybody. I'm just uh, very, very um, respectful of equipment. Okay? If it's big enough and bigger than you, it can hurt you. Okay? And it doesn't take just a second to get hurt. It really doesn't. So be careful with this stuff. That's why I feel very 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 comfortable letting Johnny run it Johnny's a professional and uh, you know I'll grab brush with grapples and stuff like that I've done a lot of that and I'll tell you what that's even dangerous it's really dangerous because those limbs can come through there and smack you if you don't have a cab on your tractor it can knock you in the next week that, that bank tractor's getting slick for him to get up he's still got a lot of rock to get in there that's just the way John is. He'll work it out. He'll get it. And when he's done, it's going to look nice. The cattle are going to have a rock pad to walk out on to drink from, and they're not going to destroy the pond. So when he gets done, uh, Joel's already putting the post out. It's coming my way now, the armload of uh, Timeless. We're going to put the fence clear up here because... Where that little soft maple tree is, that's actually water line. I don't want the animals even close to the water line. So we're gonna back it up probably three foot from the edge of the water. Because all this, you get a big rain, this is all, I'm standing in water right here, okay? Well, this pond's down probably, I would guess a good four to five feet. Yeah. A good four to five feet. We're going to drive a fiberglass rod on each side of that pad, the rock pad, one here and one over on that tank. And then that will carry our high tensile wire all the way around this whole lake. Pond, I'm sorry, I called it a lake. You guys in Canada are probably laughing when I said <laughs> I called it a lake. I could probably throw a rock across this one if I was younger. Anyway, um, the cattle will have to walk down that ramp right there and uh, and get them a drink. We're actually putting the rock ramp in the spillway. Now, spillways is where all the water goes out if this pond fills up. 
it's not going to wash out the spillway because of all the rock okay so i've done it on three other ponds and we've had no issues with any movement at all because he packs that rock in there so darn tight that when the that when the pond comes up what happens is uh the water just, just oozes oozes through the rock look at him guy's amazing guy's amazing i'm gonna do a two-part series on this i'm already at 20 minutes and we don't have the, the rock in there even started yet so i'm afraid i'm gonna run out of uh, battery power I, I was half charged <laughs> on this camera when I started this morning so anyway I'm gonna sign out and uh, you're gonna see the rest of it here on another video y'all have a good one and uh, we'll see you down the road hit that subscribe button on the way out have a good one